Manipur continues to be restive amid curfew and mobile internet suspension. In the latest report that is coming in from Churachandpur, former MLA V. Hang Khan Lian's house was reportedly burned down by miscreants. Vehicles and churches and buildings were also reportedly torched as fresh violence erupted between hill tribals and Mehtes of the valley in Churachandpur district. Tension has spread to other areas following the Solidarity March in the seven hill districts organized by the All Tribal Students Union to secure what they say is their rights and constitutional safeguards. Meanwhile, columns of army and Assam rifles along with Manipur police have reportedly intervened to control situation in Manipur after violence erupted in areas of Churachandpur, Kangpokpi and Imphal districts. According to the defence spokesperson, Army and Assam Rifles have been requisitioned by the administration on the intervening night of May 3rd and 4th and violence was controlled by morning hours. It further said approximately 4,000 villages have been provided shelter in various Army, Assam Rifle camps and state government premises at various locations. Flag marches are being conducted to keep the situation under control and shifting of villages to safer areas is also under progress. Amid the tension, Manipur Chief Minister Biran Singh in a video message appealed to the people of the state to maintain peace and to not believe in rumours or misinformation. He said that the state government is monitoring the situation and will work on resolving all issues. My dear brother and sister in the state of Manipur, during the last around 24 hours, some incident of classes, vandalisms and arson have been reported in Imphal, Shoshanpur, Vishnupur, Kangpokpi, and More, etc. Precious lives have been lost. Besides damage of property of residents, which is very, very unfortunate. These accidents are a result of prevailing misunderstanding between two sections of our society. The state government is seized of the developments and taking all steps to control the law and order situation. Additional central paramilitary forces have been requisitioned for deployment in sensitive areas. We are committed to protect the life and the property of our peoples. Long-term grievances of communities will also be suitably addressed in due course of in consultation with the people and their representatives organization. Manipur is a state in which we have all coexisted for centuries. We should not allow the culture of communal harmony between the people living in the state to be disturbed by vested interests. In this hour, I appeal to one and all to maintain peace and harmony in your respective areas, I urge you not to believe in rumors and uh, unverified messages. While soliciting your cooperation in maintaining peace, the deployed state police and the central forces have been directed to take strict action against individual and a group indulging in violence. We should all stand united to restore normalcy in Manipur at the earliest. And I also want to and now to give us a little more update on the prevailing situation in Manipur joining us through Skype we've got Mr. Ginza Walzong who is also the chairman of the research and preservation of the Zoo identities and he'll be joining us from uh, Manipur and we'll try and find out what the prevailing situation is first of all sir thank you so much for joining us at Hornville TV in such uncomfortable times but sir Coming straight to the question, uh, Hornbill TV has been receiving uh, very disturbing uh, reports of violence being reported in the state of Manipur. And till now, we are hearing that the situation is pretty tense. So, sir, what is the present ground situation like in Manipur at the moment? And what are the updates that you're receiving? And also, we've been receiving reports of uh, how uh, people have lost their lives in this ensuing violence. So, how far is this true, sir? Right. Uh, the situation here in Manipur is volatile and... Um, Manipur is burning literally. Um, so there's a lot, uh, many casualties, uh, from the tribal side. Uh, so far, the data which I received, uh, we have around, um, more than 16 people, uh, dead at the moment and 27 villages, uh, burned and countless number of injuries at the moment. 
this is the uh, numbers that I have for uh, the casualty at the moment. And the the issue is still currently going on on the street outside. So people are still fighting. Uh, the Métis and the tribes are still uh, fighting right now. So uh, I'm afraid we'll be receiving more casualties. All right, so I mean, uh, looking back at the history and looking at the population demography, I mean, if you look at it, Métis account for 53% of the population, but then they reside only in about 10% of territorial area, whereas the tribals have about 40% of the state population and they occupy around 90% of the state territory. Well, Métis and the tribals have always coexisted, like uh, Chief Minister Biren Singh had said in his message, that they had always coexisted peacefully. How did the situation get so volatile, sir? Uh, there are a uh, history of resentment uh, that the tribal have received from the uh, the Veli people from the past. So, um, if I have to go uh, go through the list, um, as you mentioned about the uh, the population and the ratio and the land uh, occupation ratios. Um, in the Manipur Assembly, the budget allocation is uh, is dis uh, discriminatory because um, when it comes to the uh, land, uh, the land ratio is about um, mm, about sixty to uh, sixty to sorry about uh, seventy to thirty is the ratio of the land, and the uh, in terms of the population, it is around sixty to forty. And when it comes to the fund allocation, the valley uh, receive about 95% of fund, total fund, and the rest of 5% goes to the hill, which is already uh, unfair and discri discriminatory. This is one uh, resentment. And the MLA representation in the Manipur Assembly is also not uh, uh, equal. The... The hill people uh, have 20 representatives and the valley people have 40, uh, 40 representatives. Yes. So this is also not equal. Yes. And uh, the non-functioning of the hill area committee, which is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the tribal, uh, which is the, uh, that, uh, which is the uh, council yes. for the hill people is not functioning properly. The chairman is being appointed by the uh, CM. So, basically, our basic rights have been uh, uh, taken away uh, by the, uh, the government. Also, uh, the pending election for the Autonomous District Council, which is pending for quite a long time. Uh, Autonomous, Autonomous District Council is the uh, local government that we, uh, the tribal, have. Yes. Uh, that too, the election, uh, in specific for Turatanpur, Yes. has not been held for a long time. And the various, you know, uh, land grabbing policy by the government, like reserve forest, protected forest, the wildlife and the wetland, you know, these are also the recent men that we, uh, the people are facing, feeling at the moment. And uh, on to top, to top that up, the latest uh, eviction from the uh, Songdan village, as well as the demolition of the churches uh, in the Infal district. Uh, three churches were demolished uh, recently. And that really sparked the, uh, the, the uh, resentment from the uh, Hill people. All right, also, so. Uh, the the military uh, ST demand, uh, yes. which has been uh, going on, and this gives you know, a feeling of insecurity to the Hill people. Because once the uh, the Métis people uh, get the SP recognition. Uh, the, the constitution uh, protects the land of protects the land and the people of the uh, hill uh, hill people through SP. And if Métis got SP, the uh, the idea behind the purpose behind the uh, constitutional safeguard is uh, not not serve anymore. All right, sir. I mean, uh, if you look at Manipur, sir, I mean, uh, Article 371C of the Constitution actually entails about Manipur and in which 
the special provisions have been given in which the governor has a special responsibility to secure proper functioning of the hill areas. So at the present moment, the governor is Anusuya Uiske. So what has been uh, the governor's response when it comes to the functioning of the hill areas? One thing, it seems to be just in the constitution, it actually is not being uh, in you, uh, in the reality. So I do not uh, know or hear the comment from the governor, but uh, for a long, long time, you know, the governor is not uh, looking or taking into account this uh, Article 371 for a long time. I, I don't remember the government, uh, the governor is taking interest with this. All right, so there are unfortunate news coming up that uh, we are getting reports uh, allegedly about 18 churches have been burned down in f of the tribal people. And, but then we are also receiving reports that the tribal people are also vandalizing temples and uh, they are targeting Maite. So how far is this true? And also, is this turning out to become a very communal issue, sir? As far as I know, uh, the tribal people do not vandalize any temple as of now. Uh, what I uh, what I heard uh, received is probably uh, houses been burned down uh, as a consequence or as a reaction from the uh, burning of houses and churches uh, from Infal. As a reactive measure, I would say. All right. Uh, so, coming back to the solidarity march that happened yesterday, we, we saw massive right. participation of tribals in the tribal solidarity march that happened yesterday in around Churachandpur area and reports are being, uh, it was held in about seven hill districts and reports are now coming in that in the Churachandpur tribal solidarity march, they had marched towards uh, Turbong area which is uh, densely Mete living there and that's where the controversy started. So, how far is this true also, sir? And uh, what kind of reports are you getting? Because I heard there's violence happening even in Imphal district. So, what? How far is this true? Sir? Me, uh, to to correct you, Tuibong is not a uh, Maite inhabited area. In fact, it is the tribal inhabited area. Okay, sir. Uh, in Surajanpur, only a small pocket of uh, villages are of uh, Maite. Uh, majority uh, are of the tribal people. So the uh, the peace or solidarity rally was carried out from the public ground till the uh, peace ground in Tulbong. So while while the hill, uh, while we are doing the uh, peace rally, there were some miscreants uh, burning down the Anglo Kuki Centenary Gate, which is uh, which is located at the border of Sultanpur and Bisampur. So when when we when we uh, came to know about the uh, burning of the gate, uh, the youth have rushed uh, to the location, and from there the spark, uh, the uh, the agitation spark uh, has been propelled again. So from that's when you know the the problem started again. So it's like uh, the uh, uh, whoever you know burned the centenary gate. Uh, due plus uh, first blood. That's why the people are agitated and have rushed toward the uh, to the border uh, village at Torbong and Kangwai. That's where you know uh, the fight uh, began. All right. So we are uh, various personalities uh, like Mary Kom, who's the ex MP. She's also appealed mm -hmm. to the central government to rein in and secure peace and prosperity in the state. So many right. people are pouring in their messages saying that please uh, pray for Manipur. So, sir, how, right. according to you, this particular situation, how can it be resolved or also, and also that now that the army is also brought in, the army is now brought in to control the law and order situation, is this going to uh, at least de-escalate the situation a bit, a bit sir? Um. If I get it correctly, you were asking me how this issue can be uh, controlled. Yes. So, um, first of all, the government, uh, led by Chief Minister Bir uh, N. Biren Singh, should uh, ask 
or requested the uh, military people to restrain from any any kind of uh, activity or force. At the same time, the tribal leaders should, uh, should also do the same, stopping the uh, youths or the people from uh, vandalizing and uh, hurting people. So uh, the restraint should come uh, from both the communities, uh, uh, either uh, both uh, Meite and the tribal side. So the initiative has to be taken from both sides. And N. Beren Singh, being the chief minister of Manipur and the head of the state, should take the first in initiative for the peace. All right. Uh, I mean, so for the past five years, Manipur has been, uh, we've got Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Union Minister Amit Shah coming into the state, campaigning for the Bharatiya Janata Party and calling Manipur a peaceful state, stating that when there was the Congress government, it was a state of buns, it was a state of uh, uh, calling for strikes, but now the situation changed. Also, in Manipur itself, there, there may be so many uh, tr tribal people or the valley people who do not want this kind of violence. So, how unfortunate is this particular situation and do you think this is a dark spot for the history of Manipur, sir? Right, right. It's a dark blot uh, for, uh, in the history of Manipur, I would say. Uh, this could have been contained uh, from the beginning However, uh, uh, however, the uh, chief minister of uh, Manipur is, uh, I don't, uh, correct me if, if I may say so, has been harboring this kind of uh, communalism in his speech, in his uh, social media posts, calling people uh, foreigners uh, or refugee or poppy cultivators. All these, you know, uh, terms, which is very direct gothry uh, for the uh, hill people, uh, calling us foreigner and to go back and all, and uh, and introducing uh, many government policy which uh, which would hurt the feeling of uh, the hill people. So this could have been uh, uh, contained uh, from the beginning, but it seems uh, uh, the resentment uh, keeps growing inside the uh, people's minds. All right, so earlier you had mentioned about the proportion of the MLAs. So you've got 40 MLAs from the valley, you've got 20 MLAs from the hills. Now, basically, this looks like a battle between the valley and the hills. Now, when it comes to the legislators present there, sir, what is the stand of the 20 MLAs of the hills and also what is the stand of the 40 MLAs of the valley and are the MLAs doing anything to try and maintain peace and bring back the prosperity and peace that was prevailing in Manipur a few years back? What are the steps being taken by your leaders, the elected leaders who have been elected by the valley people and also the hill people? I do not uh, have a communication with them uh, due to the uh, issue here. We uh, I could not contact them. But as far as I uh, know, the hill area committee uh, uh, have written many, uh, mem many memorandum to the uh, central government and various department to uh, to look into the uh, those policy which have uh, mentioned earlier, and I believe uh, now that you know uh, there are exodus uh, by, from by the Meite and the Meite has been uh, moving out uh, from Sudhachandpur uh, toward the uh, valley side. Uh, there are many hill uh, hill people stuck. Uh, or detained in the Infal, uh, capital of Infal. Uh, what I heard is the MLAs, the tribal MLAs, are working hard uh, to find a way to uh, bring those uh, tribal people who are uh, in Infal back to Chirachanpur. And uh, I'd like to add with that note, there are uh, many university students uh, whose lives are in danger and other uh, people in Infal uh, who are uh, who are not able to come come out um, to Surasanpur as of now. So right now I'm uh, working with the uh, working together with the uh, leaders of the youth people, uh, finding you know way to bring out our people from the Infal Valley. All right. So in conclusion, sir, uh, 
I don't know whether you would agree with me, but walking on the middle part, I mean, if you look at it in the tribal solidarity march, uh, there have been allegations that the tribal people, even though it was a peaceful rally, they were carrying automatic weapons. And on the other side, again, uh, for in the other side of the story, again, they are blaming that the valley people have, have re resulted in violence, especially attacking the hill people living in the Mehte areas. So don't you think that both these parties are to blame for the violence that is happening in Manipur at the moment, sir. Uh, I, I was part of the peace rally, okay, sir. and the uh, the armed forces, the police were uh, all standing beside the road. I am sure they would not see any automatic rifle uh, carried by the people. That's a bold allegation, I would say. And yeah, from our side, that's a false allegation. I don't know about the other side. All right, sir. Thank you so much for speaking to us at Hornbill TV. We hope that peace prevails in Manipur at the earliest and we hope that normal life can return. And we hope you stay safe, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that was Mr. Ginza, who's also the chairman of the research and preservation of the Zoo identity. Well, he just explained the current reality of what's happening in Manipur and also he explained as to what the grievances are from the tribal side and what the grievances are from the uh, valley side too. Well, he has alleged that there is a stepmotherly treatment to the hillside. Uh, like, let me put it back to you, about 53 populations belong in the valley, but they reside in about 10% of the territorial uh, region. Then you've got 40% of the tribals living in about what uh, Sir Ginza said is about 70 to 80 percent of land in Manipur. We hope that peace prevails in Manipur soon and we hope that the government takes uh, good initiatives to bring both the parties into the table and maybe a dialogue at the moment would be the best outcome and we just hope that all the people living in Manipur are safe and we hope that the situation resolves at the earliest.